Hi everyone, welcome back to my Z80 computer series. So I've been looking at uh, input and in particular I've put these um, push button switches on the trainer board. We had a little look at that last time. We saw the program running and we were using a couple of the switches to control memory locations. Um, but I want to keep my focus on the, the end goal, which is to build the, the whole computer. And for that, I wanted um, a full integrated keyboard. I wanted a keyboard that I can integrate into the case. Um, now, there are a lot of things I'm not sure about with regards to that, like how do things fit together? How do I assemble it? Um, how do things mount and such like? Um, and things like the PCB, um, I need to make sure I've got the footprints correct. So I wanted to start with a prototype because I didn't want to build the full thing and then find there's something wrong and I've wasted a load of time and money. So I just wanted to prove the concepts first, start with a small prototype. So I want to show you the process I went through to um, design the prototype keypad. Um, I used a couple of websites. Um, the first one I've got here is keyboardlayouteditor.com. I think I've shown this in a previous video. I'm going to put links in the description for the websites I've used, so check out the, the description of the video. Um, when you first come to this page, um, it actually gives you the default keypad layout here, which I want to use. But I found that if I just went with this one, it's it's got the wrong plate size on it because it's actually this wide, the full grey um, width on the screen it's got this text here and it was causing some problems so I'm just going to start off with a, a preset and then I'm going to remove all the stuff I don't want so I'm going to delete these keys here all of those hit delete keys and I'm just going to take the ones that are remaining and just use the cursor keys on my keyboard just to move them over to the top left and there that's exactly what I want now the plate is um, just this grey piece here and um, what I want to draw your attention to is this raw data so we've got the raw data here and now I'm going to copy this now I've moved over to this other website called plate and case builder and here We've got plate layout and I'm going to paste in that raw data. A couple of changes I'm going to make. I'm going to set the switch type to MX, which will give us simple squares. And I'm going to change the stabilizer type to cherry only. So they're the settings that I used. Um, I left everything else the same and just click the draw my CAD. And that will draw us uh, a CAD drawing of, of the plate that we need. Um, and then I'm going to DXF. That's saved the, the file. I can then jump into Fusion 360. Click that plane and go create sketch. And then up here we've got insert and we can insert DXF. Uh, this button here to select the file. There's my file, open. Just give it a second, it just takes a second or two. And there it is, there's the DXF sketch in Fusion 360. So if I show you the model that I've been working on, we'll close that for a second. Don't save. Uh, so this is this is my uh, final design for the plate um, and if we look at down here at the bottom of the timeline if I step that back to here and there is that sketch that we just looked at I did add um, a two millimeter of border around the edge I then extruded that up Uh, 
And the next sketch I did, I think it's just a couple of holes. I put a couple of holes in the plate. I was thinking ahead, but maybe I might want to screw this onto something, but I don't think I'm going to use those holes. That's all that is. And then I extruded them actually down. So yeah, you can see there's a couple of holes in it now in the middle. And then if I flip it over, What I then did was I created another sketch and I basically offset everything by one millimeter. So these are all one millimeter offsets from the original sketch. So I've just drawn a kind of an outline around everything. Um, just one millimeter offset. So this um, original um, extrusion uh, made the plate 1.6 millimeters, I believe, if I look at that. Yeah, it tells me I made that 1.6 millimetres. And that's actually, I think I could have gone a little bit thicker. I think I could have gone 1.7 millimetres. But that's what I did, 1.6 millimetres. And then if we uh, take that uh, offset sketch, I extruded that up as well. And if I zoom in, you can see there the sort of smaller hole in the middle was the original sketch. And that's the uh, 1.6 millimeters of the original extrusion. And then I've created the offset and then extruded up again a bit more to make the plate thicker. And I think I did that at 1.7 millimeters, no, 1.8 millimeters. So the 1.6 plus 1.8 gives us a total thickness of 3.2. But like I said, I think that 1.6 really ought to have been 1.7. Uh, but that's that's what I did. Uh, that's how I created this kind of um, cutouts or recesses in, in the plate. I did just do one more thing. I created an, another sketch. It's a little hard to see this, but I've, I created some um, rectangles here, the, the black lines here. Yeah, this this area here, basically the the rectangle, um, and that was to make space for the stabilizer bar, the metal bar in the stabilizer. And if we take a look at that, I then highlighted this area here and I extruded that down. So it just creates. Uh, let's just turn that sketch off. Let's sketch on. There we go. So that just extruded out um, a little a little bit more area in here, this area here, which is where the metal bar of the stabilizer needs to sit. So just really creating clearance for everything to, to fit in there. And that's basically it for that's the whole design. Um, the only thing left to do is you select the body, it goes blue, the whole thing goes blue. You can then right click that and go save as STL. Uh, okay, leaving all the settings the same and then I can just give it a file name. That gives me an STL file. I then put that STL file into Cura and then I can print it out. So this is straight off the print bed. I've just removed the, the brim. Um, and I just tried one switch just to see how it would fit and it did actually snap in there really nice uh, no filing at all um, went straight in yeah the, the plate um, does still flex a bit there's a bit of flex in it but it's not as much as before um, and obviously it would twist as well but I'm not too bothered about that because in the final design we'd have a PCB fitted to the back which would make the whole thing a lot more rigid anyway. So I think I'm not going to snap too many of these switches in here um, until I've tried the stabilizers in these ones. And I'm guessing they probably will need a bit of filing but I'll, I'll try without and we'll see. If they're too tight then I'll file them. And this was my first attempt. Um, and you can see it actually cracked here. 
because uh, everything was just too tight and this this plate was much thinner um, and it flexed a, a lot so I mean you should be able to see the, the difference in the new plate although it does flex it's it is a lot more rigid than the, the first attempt so, so I'm going to try and get this out of here and transfer it over to the red plate okay so that is actually quite satisfying they're just snapping straight in there really easily with no uh, no filing at all so um, but that is that is fitting in there quite nicely the only thing i think is maybe the plate should have been a little thicker so what i did is i've got sort of um, a recess in all of them so that the the plate needed to be like about 1.6 millimeters i think it's quite thin can't remember the exact width i will look that up um but that gave us the very very flexible plate because it should be made out of um, something metal like aluminium and I've 3D printed it out of plastic and that's just too too thin but the switches require it to be about 1.6 millimeters thick so what I've done with this one is I've, I've made the plate thicker it's about three millimeters thick this time about twice as thick but I've put little recesses in all of the uh, square holes so that the piece they're snapping into is actually um, about 1.6 millimeters thick but whatever thickness I've done I think I could go just a slight bit thicker um, because they do feel like there is a little bit of play in them still so I could probably tighten them up a little bit but they did snap in really nice and I'm kind of getting carried away and I want to I want to snap them all in so I'm going to get this printer out of the way and get back to the um, the green mat that I normally work on and then I'll show you uh, me putting this together. Now this is the beautiful keycap set that one of my daughters kindly bought me for a Christmas present this year or last year I should say. Um, and we get loads of options here. This is like the main keys and then there's like the additional keypad that you would have off to the side if you wanted to do that. There's loads of different alternatives. We've got a, a longer space bar here. This was the, um, I forget the size of these now. Are these 6.25U maybe? And then I believe um, the longer one is a 7U. So you can see you get different options. Move that to one side. Um, media keys there if you want to do that. There's a step to caps lock. If we decide we want a step to caps lock, we can do that. Cursor keys here. And then just a few more options. We've got the um, dark blue space bar, which was my original thought I would be going with this, but um, I'm quite liking the the brighter colours. So I might I might do this, but I've just got loads of options what I can do here. But what I'm going to look at today. Before I get too carried away with all of this, I'm just trying to build a prototype of the um, um, a smaller keyboard before we go full size, and I'm going to use the the number pad keys. That's that's my thought anyway. So that's why I printed this um, small um, prototype plate. Now I've done this in red, but the final design will be in black. I just thought red might be a little bit brighter to show on the videos. Yeah, so there's the keycaps. Then we've got uh, the actual key switches. Um, I'm gonna put links in the description for all of these. So I can't actually remember the exact names or where I got everything from, but I'll, I'll leave some um, links in the descriptions. So these are the key switches. Feel nice and smooth. These are linear switches, they're not tactile, so there's no kind of click to them. 
I wasn't sure what to go for. I'll probably experiment with different ones in the future. But yeah, I've got, I um, can't remember how many I bought, uh, but it's about half what I need. I need to buy another another set, same as this, to get, get all the ones I need. Um, it should be able to shine an LED through them. So if we want to put backlighting on it and do some RGB lighting, that'll be fun to play around with. Not not really in the true spirit of the retro design, but I want to have a bit of fun as well. Then we've got stabilizers. Now you get stabilizers for the space bar. So this is most likely a 6.25U stabilizer. And then you get 2U stabilizers. Generally anything below 2U doesn't need a stabilizer. What am I talking about? 2U, 1U. So a standard switch um, is a 1U. One unit, I guess that's probably what the U stands for. And then if you've got a switch that's twice as wide as that. Get them out. That would be called a 2U because it's it's twice as wide. So there's a couple of 1U switches and you can see this one's a would be a 2U, it's twice as wide. And then we get all sorts of different widths. We get um, 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, 2, 2.25. We get all sorts of different sizes. And I think they go uh, all the way up to a 7U on the, the long spacebar version. Um, but I believe, not entirely sure. No, I don't think that would work. I think you probably would need a 7U stabilizer. I'm not really, I'm not, not too sure. So let's just move on. So the stabilizers come in three parts. There's the actual metal bar. We're not going to be using the long one. I'll move him out of the way. So there's a metal bar and then there's these little green pieces. I've got lots of them. I'll just throw a few on the screen. And then we've got the purple pieces. Now the stabilizers, and there's one I've assembled, but I'm gonna to try to show you how I assembled that because I found it all confusing. Now there, there's various different types of stabilizers, so um, I'm not gonna go into it too much, but if you've got questions, then leave comments and we'll see if we can answer any questions. Um, I wasn't sure how the whole thing's gonna fit together, how it all mounts together. And, I found these quite tricky to figure out how you put them together. So let's start with one of those. Um, I've got one there assembled, but I've got one more to do. So I'm gonna try and show you that. Let's make a bit of space and let's see if we can bring the camera in a little bit. There's my manual zoom. <laughs> okay. So we'll start with the, the purple and the green pieces. Now, um, you need to insert the green piece in into the bottom of the purple piece, uh, the bottom being the the larger side. Um, but you you could put it in two ways. It could it could go in that way, or you could turn it over and it could go in the other way. So let's just have a look at these. Now on the bottom of them there is um, a larger notch and a smaller notch. And if you can look very carefully. Um, they're kind of stepped. Camera's not going to focus at all, is it? There's a, what I'm trying to point out is a little notch in this corner, if I can get it to focus again. And it sort of becomes obvious when you, when you put them in here, um, there's a, again, a small square in this top, top left corner here that sticks out. And if I stick the green piece in, Hopefully that becomes obvious. So it would go in that way around. And I'm trying to point out that the square in the purple piece fits into the square notch of the green piece. Now I know I've done a terrible job of focusing the camera. That's probably about as good as I'm going to be able to explain it. So we've got... Um, this sort of t-shaped piece here we'll see in a second that's where the metal bar is going to snap into 
and the green piece I said has had a large notch and a small notch and um, it's the large notch that we want um, to the side where the bar is going to go in and if I get the bar and we sort of need to poke the bar this is really difficult to show on camera um, we need to poke the bar down into that notch in the green piece And then it snaps in to the purple piece. I've not got that quite right. There. So the bar goes all the way through the green piece. So it sort of slots into the bottom part of it. And then that allows you to turn the bar and the green piece will move up and down. So yeah, probably a terrible job of explaining it, but it's quite difficult to show on camera. Let's try and do the other one. So I have another one. So I'm going to put it that way around. Pop him in there. Kind of fiddly to thread it through the the green piece. So it's in there. So yeah, I I don't know, I probably didn't do a very good job of showing you that, but oh that's not in right, is it? That, that's not right. There. So that's that. And then if you bring it over to my plate, and this is straight off the printer, no no filing. Um, one I've snapped in already. I'm trying to think, how do we do this? I believe it's going to go that way. I think we push the bar through the, the slot. That's why these, these pieces are cut out. See these pieces here don't bridge right across. They've got a slot in them. I think that's so the bar can fit through. leave Okay, I think I'm putting it in the wrong way around. I think the bar goes the other way. Yeah. And then you see this um, kind of a little lug sticking out of the purple piece and it should fit into the little um, recessed slot in the red piece. You should just be able to just literally just snap it in so it's really easy once you um, know which way around it goes so that's that one and I should have another one up here so if I can do this a bit better this time so if 
think it went that way. Yeah, it's in. Then we can snap in this the actual switches. Um, they have a a hole in them where the LED light will shine through, and I'm putting that at the top. I don't know if I'm correct to do that, but that's what I'm doing. Um, and I'm guessing I'm going to do that the same on all of them. So I'm guessing that this can go in here, the hole at the top. Again, it just snaps in. No force at all. So I suppose I can put them all in. I don't like that. It doesn't feel like it's really clipping in. I think we may have to Let me look at these. Let's have a look at a switch. Yeah. I think it's because they clip in top and bottom and they they've got nothing to grip onto where these notches are, so we may have to turn them. Although I'm sure that's not the right thing to do. It wouldn't really be a problem if we had the the PCB on the back and we soldered all the pins on. I think it would hold itself in. It can't move laterally. It can't move sideways or up and down. But it can come up towards us. But if it was soldered onto a circuit board then that wouldn't be a problem. But because um, I'm not going to be using uh, LED lighting on this prototype... I think I think I can get away with turning them sideways. And then they do snap in. There. Now that's much more secure. Okay, let's carry on, do a few more. So all the others I will put the, the hole to the top. These were quite expensive. I'll put the prices on the on the description as well. This is a very expensive way of doing it. I just really like the idea of being able to completely customize everything. Because I wanted this to really be my own design. It's quite satisfying. Let's keep going. Trying to make sure I get them all the right way up. I'm really happy that I didn't have to do any filing. Because that was quite tedious on the first one. And it didn't work out very nice anyway. There we go. They're all in. Now, I'm a little uncertain about how we attach the switches to the ones with the stabilizers on. I think. Feels like we're just going to push them on. But. Well, it's on there. Uh, 
as you can see that operating. Where are all the numbers? It would be easier if I just tipped this tray out, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to go everywhere. We pause the video and I'll get, just get all them out. Okay, I've got them all out. So I'll start putting them on. Just one thing I will sh try to show you. The switches have different profiles. See this switch is the black one's much thicker than the blue one. So every row has its own profile. So every row across the keyboard has got its own profile to it. So we need to keep the keys in the correct rows. But apart from that, we're free to put them wherever we want. But obviously this being a keypad, I'm gonna do this pretty standard. That's one. Real nice. It's quite satisfying pushing this all together. Now, normally, I'm trying to think what goes here. So I think normally the plus key goes here. Try and get that on now. Hmm. I don't think which way around it goes. Obviously it could go that way or that way. Weird that the plus is offset to the side. I have a suspicion that's something to do with the light that shines through in the back of the switch. It's off to one side. You see I turned it. Maybe you're supposed to do that. And maybe that goes here. So I think with a black plate that would look a little better. And then I think the minus key goes here. And multiply, divide, which is a forward slash. Now the enter, we've got a choice. We've got two, two enter keys here. So what do we go for? Do we go for black or blue? Hmm. Don't suppose it matters one little bit, but let's go with the black one. I feel like it wants to go on and I don't want to force it. Yeah, 
There we go. Now, here, normally, I believe, would be a num numlock key. This one. Um, I suppose it really matters what I do. Just don't think the numlock key makes much sense on a little standalone keypad like this. looking at the other keys thinking looks like the same profile can't decide what to do too many choices. I'm going to go with an escape key. Again, if we're keying some numbers in and we decide we've made a mistake, we can just press escape to get out. What goes here? I think it's supposed to be a decimal point. I don't see that key. There it is. It's this one, I believe. Yeah. So then I moved on to the PCB design. It actually took me about two or three days, um, not solid, but um, two or three days sort of in the evenings um, working on the PCB design. It is quite time consuming. Um, so I've got um, like a switch uh, matrix here. We'll, we'll cover that more when we actually get into the functionality of it. So the concept is you kind of feed power into um, one of the rows and then you check um, the values of the columns to see which switches were pressed in that in that row. Um, and then you repeat the process for the next row and you keep doing all the rows and then it will then tell you which keys were pressed. We also have these diodes in here. That's to stop the signals um, coming back. But I'll, I'll go into that later because it's probably worth um, spending a bit more time explaining that but for the moment I'm just designing the PCB and generally when you design the PCB it's always best to draw the schematic first I've also got a little connector here um, so if we look at the PCB design so I'll turn a few of the layers off uh, let's turn off the routing to start with and the bottom silk so the yellow lines are the, the top silk screen. So this is the top of the PCB. Um, I've got all the switches laid out in the relevant positions. I did find a, a footprint for them uh, that somebody else had designed. Um, I just I converted it to my own design because I didn't like the way how the origin of the switch was up in the top left. So I just saved my own version with the, the origin in the center. And that helped me lay them out. I set my grid to um, 19.05. I think that's the spacing between the centers, um, which helped me lay the switches out. And I'm hoping, hoping that everything lines up. Um, so yeah, after positioning the switches, I then had to position the, the diodes, but the diodes are gonna be attached to the back of the board. So the silk screen for them is actually on the back in green. Um, so that's the, 
that's the silk screen on the back and uh, because it's all kind of layered on top of each other to help sort of show with the alignment of things um, the silk screen on the back is actually in reverse so you can see my text here in green it's in reverse um, but it will be the right way when you flip it over so it's as if we're sort of seeing through the the circuit board so yeah diodes uh, on the back and then the connector is going to be attached to the back as well um, and with JLC PCB you can specify where you want your order number to go so it should appear here um, when we get the board um, if I quickly talk about the routing I won't go on about it too much but generally the way I do my routing is let's turn the silk screens off so this is the bottom layer routing and um, so I've done this I've come out of the connector and generally the way I do my routing on through hole stuff is I have all my vertical lines on one layer so I've taken um, lines from the the connections on the on the connector to basically straight down the center of the board and then you should see the little circles in there they might look like little dots at this zoom level and um, they're vias that come up to the to the top of the board um, and I've got some other sort of vertical um, connections here traces sort of here here and here but you'll notice that all the blue lines are vertical and then on the top layer I do the opposite and, and I lay them all out horizontal and I think it gives a fairly neat um, routing to the whole thing although you do have to use quite a few vias um, maybe that's a negative but I think it, it works out quite neatly like this um, I think that's probably about it um, we can then move on to the 3D rendering so that's what the board will look like um, I think I put a post in the community channel saying I didn't know what color to do it um, I was thinking that for this computer I, I wanted to go with green because I thought that was more of a retro look I know we won't actually see it because it'll be inside the case but you know, while we're working on it it'll look like it's kind of old school green um, but I couldn't decide um, blue generally is my favorite color for PCBs but I, I try and mix it up because I, I always do my PCBs in blue um, red does look very nice uh, I don't like the white and I don't like the yellow um, black would give quite a professional look um, or purple if you want to go a little bit funky um, the, like I said the diodes are on the back so if we flip the board over that's all the diodes and I don't know if my diodes will actually be red um, it's just whatever I've got uh, there's the connector so we can uh, attach a ribbon cable to this should be quite neat um, I might put one of these connectors on the trainer board and then we can plug this in to the trainer board I've got space on the board so I could do that um, yeah so I actually in the end went with blue so it should end up looking something like this now that's uh, that's now on order from JLC PCB they're currently uh, manufacturing it right now as I'm recording this video um, and it'll probably take two or three weeks for that them to arrive um, I will be getting five so as usual I potentially could could give some of these away if somebody wants a PCB um, yeah that's about it I'm gonna leave the video here because it's got very long and um, I don't really want to continue until I get these PCBs but because they're gonna take quite a long time to come in maybe we could revert back to the trainer board and do something a bit more uh, with the input switches on the trainer board whilst we're waiting for this PCB but thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one